Here are the common angles expressed in degrees from TR-04. You should know these. Here they are expressed in radians from TR-06. You should know these too. Now we're going to add to the diagram. You must know the cosine and sine of each of these angles. The cosine and sine are simply the x and y coordinates of the angle's point on the unit circle. We're not going to bother knowing the values of the other four trig functions because they can all be derived from cosine and sine. The quadrantal angles should be trivial. Their coordinates are all zeros, ones, and negative ones like this, cosine comma sine. So let's set those aside and focus on the other 12 angles. I'm going to show you their cosines and sines, but don't panic. There's an easy way to know these without memorizing them. Due to symmetry across both axes, each of these 12 angles have coordinate pairs consisting of just three numbers, though they can be positive or negative depending on the quadrant. You can think of these numbers as large, medium, and small, and remembering them is as easy as 3, 2, 1. The large number is the square root of 3 over 2. The medium number is the square root of 2 over 2. And the small number is the square root of 1 over 2. But since the square root of 1 is just 1, the small number simplifies to 1 half. But the 3, 2, 1 memory aid should be pretty clear. If you're interested, I'll prove these numbers in video TR-15Z. But for now, let's accept them. Just know these three numbers and the points corresponding to each common angle, and you know the cosine and sine of these angles. Here's how easy it is. Let's look at the three common angles in quadrant 1. You should remember these are 30, 45, and 60 degrees. Let's draw arrows corresponding to their x-coordinates, which are their cosines. There's a large, a medium, and a small. Yes, it's that simple. The cosine of 30 degrees is the large number, square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of 45 degrees is the medium number, square root of 2 over 2. And the cosine of 60 degrees is the small number, 1 half. Let's do the cosines over in quadrant 2. These angles are 120, 135, and 150 degrees. The cosine of 120 degrees is the small number, 1 half but the x-coordinates over here in quadrant 2 are negative, so the cosine of 120 degrees is negative 1 half. The cosine of 135 degrees is negative medium, so negative square root of 2 over 2. And the cosine of 150 degrees is negative large, so negative square root of 3 over 2. The sine function is exactly the same, but we're imagining arrows or distances in the y direction. They're the same three numbers, positive up in quadrants 1 and 2, negative down in quadrants 3 and 4. Try this one. What's the sine of 45 degrees? Positive, medium, square root of 2 over 2. Remember, the cosine is the x-coordinate, and the sine is the y-coordinate of the angle's point on a unit circle. See the point in your head, then describe the x and y coordinates to get there from the origin in terms of large, medium, and small. This will give you the cosine and sine of the angle. So what's this angle, and what are the cosine and sine? It's 30 degrees. The coordinates of the point are positive large, positive small. So square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. The x-coordinate, blue, is the cosine and the y-coordinate, red, is the sine. How about this one? 135 degrees. The cosine and sine are negative medium, comma, positive medium. Negative square root of 2 over 2, comma, positive square root of 2 over 2. How about this one? 270 degrees. Let's not forget the quadrantal angles just because they're so easy. The cosine is 0, the x-coordinate, and the sine is negative 1, the y-coordinate. Which angles have a cosine of negative 1 half? That's an x-coordinate of the small distance in the negative direction. So the sine can be positive or negative large distance. These correspond to angles of 120 degrees, 
and 240 degrees. You may have noticed that medium will always be paired with another medium, and that's for these 45 degree angles that bisect each quadrant. Just be careful of the signs, positive or negative. The other angles, the multiples of 30 degrees, will always have a large and a small, though they can be in either order and the signs can be positive or negative, depending on the quadrant. You should be able to identify the sine and cosine of the angles corresponding to all these points. Please notice, I didn't say memorize. Some students print out a sheet like this and try to memorize it. Yikes, don't memorize this. Instead, envision the angle points in each quadrant and large, medium, or small arrows to get there from the origin. Horizontal, x, cosine, vertical, y, sine. Please practice. Your goal at this point should be to draw a circle, label all these common angles in degrees and radians, and write the cosine and sine of each angle. If your instructor draws a circle on the board and asks for a volunteer, would you? In the next video, TR-16, we'll cover trig functions on a calculator.